We're here. We are. We're here. live on Ustream right now. Well, we're not live. Because it's like a big delay. Like, I'm we're, we're live in. And there's still, there's... Good going. Good going. We're, we're live on the internet. Or it's October. One of the two. Because um, that's how things go. Welcome. Welcome back, everyone, to, to Keith Explains. Uh, we, we took the summer off, uh, and by that I mean I took the summer off, uh, and by that I mean I spent the summer working like a dog at my actual job and did not have any time to really do much of anything like make TV shows or edit TV shows or think about TV shows or deal with my friends that kept whining about how we weren't taping a TV show this month, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But here we are, it's August, uh, and we're doing the TV show because uh, I forgot to email the station before last Thursday and say, hey, can I not do August? And then once I miss that seven day window, I gotta pay the cash. And by golly, I'm gonna use the studio then. Because I, if, if anything, I am a cheap bastard that spends way too much money on crap I don't need. Um, anyway, welcome to the show. Uh, I have a lot of topics. Most of them are terrible because I really haven't been thinking about the show at all. So I just wrote a bunch of crap down. Um, but I do. First, most important topic. Okay, good. We're on camera two or why? John, come in. Come in, John. John, John, hurry. Wait, wait. Come in. Come in. Come in. I know it's long enough. You were here before. Hello. Okay. Okay. Look into camera two. Hey, camera two. Okay. I can't see if you're on. I, come over I, a little more. Come over a little more. Okay, everyone, this is John. This is my friend John. Hey, how you doing? John is single. Are you ladies, me out? On your ladies, show? John is single, ladies. No, I'm not pimping you out because there's no cash going to change hands. <laughs> okay. This is, this is a freebie. This is a freebie. This is me putting you on television. Single. Single. He's... Yeah, single. He's acceptably looking. I mean... Not quite the, uh, the, the catch. I don't, I'm not sure if that's true, but... but it's Compared to uh, no, oh, he's the audience says I'm not a catch. Well, one person, but that's yeah. she's got issues. Okay, now go away, go away, go back, go back. Okay, um, my friend John is single. Uh, John didn't used to be single. Um, John used to be married uh, to a nice woman, a lovely woman. I'm gonna say that John doesn't think that. John needs closure, so it's fine. <laughs> fine that John thinks that. Um, but in a sense, we, we feel responsible for John being single because John used to be single and then we introduced him to the nice woman at this very television show. <laughs> Nature took its course. Uh, then for a while, John wasn't single and now John is single. So we're back. We're trying again. <laughs> Second shot. <laughs> this time for sure is all I'm saying. Um, so you you've seen what he looks like. He's attractive. He has a job. Uh, it is for an HVAC company, but it counts as a job. Um, he doesn't have an office, but I'm told no one there does. They all sit in a big room with their headphones and type. Uh, and so it's like competitive peer pressure thing where everyone else is typing, so you better not be surfing the web. I couldn't work like that. <laughs> um, you know, I, I like to have my door, which is open all the time. Um, but anyway, John is single. Uh, and so before the show, John was asking, hey, how do I not be single? Uh, and I have several tips for John. He doesn't want some of them. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm like, you got to sign up for the everyone meets everyone on the internet. So you got to sign up for, you sign up for OkCupid okay because uh, they're math nerds. Um, and now they're, I think, owned by Match.com, but they're still not totally as creepy as Match.com. Um, and they're not that Christian Mingles thing, which is weird. Uh, anyway, you sign up for the Cupid, for the OkCupid okay thing, because that's full of, well, really, it's full of people younger than you, but that's what you're aiming for. Uh, and some of them are kinky, and so they can teach you stuff. Uh, and then you sign up for FetLife. 
uh, and you sign up for FetLife because you're Canadian and you need to broaden your horizons. <laughs> you sign up for FetLife, your horizons are going to be really broad, really uncomfortably broad in a lot of cases. Um, and he said someone signed him up for Match.com and it wasn't me. And after he said it and explained it, I was like, that would have been funny <laughs> if I had done it. But I, not, not funny enough. Anyway, John needs a woman, a cow. Here's, or a man. Here's, here's point number two, which I've given John before. He's not as interested at this point. I'm like, double your possibility. It's, you don't have to go all the way. You could just be bisexual. <laughs> Perfectly okay. It's perfect. It's acceptable in today's society. It's, it's even hip. It's even hip. And I've seen you wearing hip hats, so I'm, you're already 15, 20% of the way there. Um, so that's, that's point number two. Um, point number three, here's the tough part for John. Now, I've known John for a long time. Uh, John has a particular personality, which is going to mesh with a small set of other people. <laughs> that's not bad. Most people are that way. But that's not helpful when you're dating. So here's tip number three. Don't talk <laughs> at all for like the first two or three dates. Just try to push through them, feign a cold, or uh, my throat's really raspy. Uh, I inhaled a bunch of smoke rescuing orphans. So why don't you talk? You talk. I'd love, I, I'd love to hear about Chicks love it when you listen to them. I've heard. I don't know if it's true or not. I mean, I think it might be true. It might not be, but it's probably true. It's probably true. Um, those are my three tips for John. Um, and we'll bring, we'll bring John back out so you can get another look at him. He's, he's coming around. He's coming around. He wasn't standing by his camera. I don't know why, but he's, he's putting his headphone down. This is, we're on live TV. This is... This is the only thing on KMVT 15 right now, is what I'm saying. Look, he put his hat on. He put his hat on. This is great. And he, he brought the cord, but he took the head thing off, okay? <laughs> See? John, John, I, I, what I'm going to say is he's not an unattractive man. So, ladies, give him a shot. Uh, and if you're a particularly good-looking guy, give him a shot. <laughs> <laughs> pictures of the face only, please. Pictures, face pictures only. Uh, you can send them to john at keithexplains.com. What? I have a new address on Keith. You don't, but you will in like half an hour. <laughs> as soon as this show is over, I'm going to make an alias. Uh, so don't send it now. Uh, in, in, you'll see, it'll be down here. You can send it to the address down here. Although he'll probably be married by then. Um, it takes that long to edit the show? Yeah. Or, or if it takes me a really long time, you might be divorced again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not. Let's hope not. This time for real. This time for real. Great practice marriage. Yes. Great practice marriage. You're a professional. Yes. Now you know how to do it. I heard. I heard. I know. I know not. How to do it yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, that's that was tips for single friends. Tips for single friends. Um, good luck, man. Good luck is all I can say. Um, oh, look, and I, I'd written it twice. First, I had written John's dating life, and then I thought, well, what if I want to broaden it out? So I wrote tips for single friends. And then once I started talking, I realized I don't want to broaden it out. I got I got no other single friends that I'm trying to hook up. Well, maybe Jim. Jim might be single. Yeah, he's single. Jim's a lawyer. I mean, that's good. Okay, get in here, Jim. Get in here, Jim. It's going to be a... We'll see if we can do two oh, yeah. weddings in one show. I'll get, a, I'll get a series on Discover. Get in here. Get in here. Uh, every morning, this is Jim. This is Jim, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you got to come in more, come in I more. think. Yeah, yeah, uh, see, I can see. Oh, now uh, down. Now down. down. Be short. Yeah. Be short. This is Jim. He's tall. <laughs> ladies love tall. Um, and he's employed... Kind of, kind of. He's employed enough. Um, and, and he's got great taste in shirts. <laughs> shirts. I, here's the thing. I, I have a lot of Hawaiian shirts now, and I put them on. And people are like, 
that's a nice shirt. And I'm like, this is as dressed up as I can get. This is the, the upper limit for Keith dressed up is a Hawaiian shirt. Um, anyway, we're talking about Jim. We're talking about our friend Jim. I don't know if Jim's on OkCupid. He might be. Look him up, Jim. Just type Jim in the box. <laughs> Look through the pictures. Um, Fet Life? Are you in Fet Life? I don't even know what that okay, is. Okay, yes, you do. Actually, I I've know. watched your TV show. I actually don't know what that is. Oh, you should well, you should go there, man. <laughs> you can get some topics. Will the NSA come get me? No, I don't think they will. No, that's more of a like a ISIS Iraq. I think would get the NSA interested uh-huh. in you. FetLife, they they have a lot of computers. They don't have enough computers to comb through all of the people that go to okay cupid and fat life okay go 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 okay anyway this is jim okay also <laughs> single also uh jim at keithexplains.com um half an hour you gotta wait like half an hour because it'll take me a little while to get the the email forwarding set up um again face pictures only please i've heard well, send whatever you want. Uh, John. John knows how to delete Boys things. Boys and guys for John. <sighs> uh, look, we talked about the shirt break. See? We're, man, I'm, I've used up most of a piece of paper. Barbecue. Um, a friend of mine is having a barbecue on Sunday, and he said, come to my barbecue. And I'm like, okay, this will be like the fourth barbecue I've been to this month. It'll be great. Because I used to... I used to not be a huge fan of barbecues because of the cooking, right? And it's always stressful cooking food for barbecues because you always want to do it on a grill. And grills are these amazing things that have a huge amount of heat pouring off them, which will ruin your food if you don't pay close attention to it. And at a party, I never managed to pay close attention to anything because I always got like 17 things going on and like by the time I get out to the grill again to flip the burgers, they're burned or I flip them and I take them off and then people are like, this burger's still icy in the middle, you moron, don't you know how to cook burgers? And no, I don't. There's some timing thing, they're like if it's 400 degrees then it's three minutes aside, if they're this thick and it, I was never good at that. Um, so barbecues always were stressful to me, which is why usually if I have a barbecue, I make bratwurst because bratwurst are at least a solvable problem from an engineering perspective, which is (laughs) you take the bratwurst out of the container they came in and you throw them in a big pot and you fill the pot halfway with water and then the rest of the halfway you fill it with beer that people brought to your previous party which has been sitting in your garage getting all warm and skunky for the last 11 months. Um, So you cover the bratwurst with the the skunky, bad, maybe, you don't know, beer, and then you boil them for like 15 minutes. When the water's boiling, the bratwurst are cooked because you only got to get bratwurst up to like 145 degrees before they kill you, and the boiling water has done that. So now you got a thing of cooked, gross, beer, waterlogged bratwurst, all you got to do is throw them on the grill long enough to get brown on both sides and you're done. It's easy, solvable problem. And you put some corn in, you have bratwurst, you have corn. Everyone loves bratwurst and corn. Where I grew up, out here, half people don't eat bratwurst. They're like, hey, do you have any tofu bratwurst? And I'm like, I don't think you even make tofu bratwurst. I don't. You might be the first person in the world has ever said the word tofu bratwurst. Anyway, that's barbecue, right? So, a while back, I bought me one of the... Now, I know you people watching this show know I am a nerd. I am an engineer. I'm a geeky guy. I just like to figure out the best way to do something and do it that way. So, I bought me one of them sous-vide. Now, I say sous-vide. I don't know why. They're like sous-vide machines, right? They're French. They're, They're this... It's French. They're this way of cooking food and water at very particular temperatures sealed inside something. And I forget why sous vide, like sealed underwater or something. Um, There's a lot of food you can cook this way, but I I bought it really for three foods. Uh, Tri-tip, because you can cook a great tri-tip. You buy a tri-tip, it already comes sealed in plastic, right? You buy this 
tri-tip and it's pre-marinated and it comes in a vacuum pack thing and you get home and you crank your sous vide and you say I want 134 degrees and 36 hours before the party you throw your tri-tip in and at the time of the party your your meat is cooked and it's perfect it's perfect it's almost exactly medium well from edge to edge you take it to the party you throw it on the grill for five minutes on each side get a little brown on it everyone loves your 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 tri-tip I also bought it for for hard boiled eggs because you can do hard boiled eggs almost perfectly, except Loretta hates them. Um, and and like chicken breasts, you can do chicken breasts great because you get these really juicy chicken breasts that aren't dried and they're they're perfect. Um, and from my science geeky perspective, right, I have all these cookbooks that are like this is how you cook, this is how you should cook chicken, right? You should get it up to this temperature for this long and then keep it there for that, and then you're done. And you can you can do that perfectly with one of these things. So that's that's the geeky side of barbecue. Now the non-geeky side of barbecue is, for God's sakes, don't buy chips because they're bad for you. They're <clears throat> chips are logically the equivalent of just taking a spoon and sticking a big thing of Crisco, and then scooping that into your mouth while eating saltines. <laughs> um, anyway, if you're doing the barbecue you're going to get chips anyway and then I'm going to sit at the barbecue and there's going to be a big bowl of chips and salsa and I'm just going to scoop salsa into my mouth with chip after chip after chip and then that night I'm going to feel shame. I'm going to sit in my house and go, man, I had way too many chips at that party. They were good individually. Like, I'd be like, ooh, salsa, salty. And then later, shame, shame. Um, <sighs> Corn, I recommend corn for barbecues, but only because I'm from Wisconsin. Out here, corn's not a big barbecue thing, but in Wisconsin, you gotta have corn at a barbecue. Um, and generally, you're supposed to have this, this big tub of melted butter, so that after you've gotten your ear of corn, you just submerge the entire ear of corn in the butter, and then you swirl it around for a couple seconds, and you've, you've left all the leafy stuff on the top, to hold on to then you pull it out of the butter and you let the butter drip off it for a little bit then you put it back in again as if putting it back in got more butter on it but it doesn't then you take it out and you cover it with salt and then you eat it um, don't do the big thing of butter either because that that shit will kill you uh, but the corn's nice barbecuing that's what you should do for barbecuing it's August you've really got three weekends left when you can plausibly barbecue in California before it starts to get creepy. In October, it's definitely creepy. In September, it depends on the weather, but it's it might be okay. Uh, Labor Day is your last big barbecue weekend, so everyone should have a big barbecue this Labor Day. <coughs> Get the sous vide quickly, they're gonna sell out, and, and, and the corn. Good luck, everyone. Okay, there's that. I wrote movies because I was like, well, it's been an awful long time since I explained a movie. And I was going to say to the audience, if, if this show just totally fell apart, I'd be like, hey, name a movie. And then I would explain it as fast as I could. But I'm going to skip that now because I'm told we got like eight minutes left. And I'm like, really? I'm that far into the show? Okay, here we go. Watch. I'm on camera too. Okay. See these shoes? The last time you're going to see these shoes, because when I get home tonight, I'm throwing these shoes away. Because last night, or yesterday, I went to Zappos and bought new shoes. Although when you see me, they're going to look exactly like these shoes, because they're the exact same shoe. Because as usual, what I do is I find a shoe that I like, and then I keep reordering it until they stop making it. And then I'm forced to find another shoe that I like. Uh, and again, my definition of shoe I like is it's got to be black and it's got to be a tennis shoe. And other than that, I don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of criteria. It should be vaguely cushy. Um, and it's got to be black because any other color shoe, I cannot walk around and think at the same time. Because as I walk and my foot comes into my field of vision, it's like a high priority interrupt in the CPU that is my head. And as I'm walking down a hallway, all I can think is foot, 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 foot. It interrupts my... Black shoes don't do that, so I go with black shoes. 
Ordinarily, I would not have mentioned the shoes. Um, but the one thing I will save from these shoes, because they haven't gone bad yet, is, I don't know if you can, watch, I'll show you. I'm going to lift them up. See? See the shoelaces? Ha-ha! They're not laces at all. They're, they're like a tiny shoe bungee cord, like a circle, like a big rubber band made of bungee cord, which is just a rubber band with fabric, I guess. <laughs> so they are like a big rubber band, which you, you put in your shoe, and it saves you from ever having to tie your shoe again. Okay, I, I haven't tied my shoes in like four months since I put these things in. You just slip them on and off. By the time I die, I'm going to have saved like 18 minutes. Like I'll, I'll have got an extra 18 minutes of life out of not tying my damn shoes every morning because I, I bought the bungee cord shoe things. Why are you throwing them away? They still look new. No, 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 they're not. They, see, the stuff on the bottom has started to tear. Uh, and so like when I stand, occasionally I tip over. Because it collapses. <laughs> I was trying to figure it out. I'm like, why when I go up the stairs does my ankle go whoosh? And it's because this whole side of the shoe is kind of starting to go bad. And if I, if that's the part of my foot that hits the step, it just keeps going. It's scary. Ah, new shoes. Uh, okay, there's this rich guy who had this idea. He's like, California is too big of a state. It should be smaller. Uh, and ordinarily, if you were a guy and you had this thought, you'd tell all your friends down at the pub, and they'd go, ha, 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 good one. And then you would talk about sports ball. Mm -hmm. uh, but since this guy's really ungodly rich, he paid a bunch of people to collect signatures, and now we're going to have to vote on this stupid idea this fall. He's like, California is too big. It should be seven states. It's practically ungovernable. Six. That was seven. Six. Six. Six, 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 six or six. seven. Six. The third <laughs> practically the same. He's like, six Californias. We're going to divide the state up into six other states. Those will each be governable. I'm like, first of all, I don't, I don't think they will. And second of all, it seems like a terrible idea for at least three of those states. Because they go from being reasonably well off to the poorest state in America <laughs> and the second poorest or the third poorest state in America. Uh, I think Arkansas still gets to be the second poorest state in America. Um, but I had a, I thought, why six? Why, why did we pick six Californias? I had a better idea. I think 70. I think we should divide California into 70 states. That would get us to the same density of representation as North Dakota. <laughs> and then 70 Californias, each roughly as many people as in North Dakota, we'd get 140 more senators. Um, the Senate could move into the House of Representatives, uh, and the House of Representatives could move somewhere else because the Senate would make them. I don't, I don't know. It'd be great. Uh, I, I think Santa Clara should team up with Campbell and Sunnyvale, and we'd be a state. Technically, we're a little too big to be a state. Maybe we'll cut the bottom part of Campbell off. Um, San Jose is like five states. Okay, so Mayor Reed would have to pick which state he wanted to be governor of. Uh, and then all of the neighborhoods in San Jose could declare themselves sub I don't know, it's a great idea, people. <laughs> 70 Californias. Um, now I know what you're thinking. There's only one flaw in this plan. Who's going to come up with the 70 names? And how are we going to teach them to third graders? I fix this one. We're just going to number them. I mean, no one cares, right? It'll just be Cal 1, Cal 2, Cal 3, Cal 4, uh, and we'll draw lots for the numbers, uh, is my thought. It'll, it'll work great. 70 Californias. Now, there's, there's risk that other states will want to follow suit and that Texas would want to divvy itself up. 
Uh, and to this, I can only say, no, no, Texas doesn't. Texas has, Texas is full of narcissists, right? They're, they're not going to stop being Texas because only one of them could be Texas after they divvied themselves up. And no one could agree who that should be. The Alamo's in Austin, right? The rest of Texas doesn't want to lose the Alamo. They've told us for 100 years they're not allowed to lose the Alamo. So Texas is stuck being one big state. Uh, Florida, Florida might try to divide itself up. But it's full of old people, and they're not good at voting. We've, we've learned this. We just have to produce a complicated enough ballot, and they'll screw it up. 70 Californias, it's my idea. Uh, I'm collecting signatures, but again, I'm not a rich guy. So I'm relying on you, my vast viewing audience. Write your name on a piece of paper. Uh, at the top of the paper, write, I support 70 Californias. Mail it to me. Self-addressed down envelopes, please. Uh, and I'll, I'm sure it's not hard to get things in the ballot. That's been my observation based on the crap that gets on the ballot. <laughs> um, uh, people keep saying, Keith, you keep losing weight. Uh, here's the weird thing. I, I'm not keep losing weight. Like, I've been stuck at exactly the same weight for nine months. People keep thinking I'm getting thinner. Uh, and I don't know if I'm actually getting thinner, although I have had to punch another hole in my belt. So somehow, although I weigh the same, I'm slightly thinner. I prefer to think that I'm getting muscle mass, but it's probably just blood pooling near my feet. <laughs> um, and then people say, Keith, what... What is your observation? I got one minute. Man, I'm... Keith, what's the biggest thing you have noticed after losing weight? And here's the thing. See these lines? I didn't used to have those. I used to have this vaguely chubby face that had no lines in it, and now, now I almost look like I could be in that monkey movie. That's all I'm saying. Just what a little... Paragraphs. Paragraphs? I don't believe it. Uh, anyway, thank you all for mm. watching. I didn't even get to the... I didn't get to the drought. I didn't get uh, the ho 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 down. I went to I went to this fundraiser called the ho 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 down. It had a country theme. You Anything. people with dirty minds at home. Um, street dance. We went to this street dance in Santa Clara. Here's here's the thing I've observed. My musical tastes are stuck in like the 80s and 90s, but apparently a lot of other people's musical tastes are also stuck in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> but they're all my age. So when you go to like a street dance, it's now full of old people dancing as opposed to punks with their mosh pits. <sighs> oh, I met, I met the president of the United States 19 years from now. Nice young man I know named AJ. Uh, it's, it's practically a fait accompli given what he's done so far. Uh, just get used to people, President AJ. Maybe President A or President J. I don't know, I don't know what he want. I mean, he'll figure something out. Uh, look, I did that one. Do we still have a minute left? I mean, normally you'd be pointing and telling me it was over. I mean, I didn't talk about that. I did talk about that. Oh, we, we engraved a bunch of wine glasses for somebody. So again, lasers for the win. And the rotary pool. Lasers and rotary pool. Okay, thank you. <laughs>